All right, guys, welcome to episode three of Hype. It is live right now with uh, June 30th is the date, 2013. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be July 1st, 2013. Welcome, everybody. I'm Raffle Copter. Joining me tonight is Dirty Bird. Hello. <laughs> Kevin's back. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and the big D, Dinsdale. Well, everyone. <laughs> He's so professional. Yes. <laughs> Hello, I brought the beans. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> so no bikini top on Kev tonight. No but. bikini. Mrs. Kev, let me make this point clear. Mrs. Kev bought me a bikini. I sent her back to Walmart today with the receipt to get the money back. Because there is just no way. I love everybody, but it's just not happening. Uh, Man, we save save that for season two. Yeah, there you go. Season, yeah, fight season two, episode one. Kevin a bikini. God, fear the balls. Anyway. All right, guys. Well, our first topic we're going to discuss tonight is all about next-gen consoles, um, what we think of them, what you guys think of them. So if you have any opinion in chat, you guys want to discuss it, feel free to post it. We'll try and keep up with you. But uh, we have some kind of uh, prefab topics that we want to cover. So... First of all, let's just kind of go around and just see what everyone's opinion is. I'll kick it off. Um, I know before the next-gen consoles, and those of you that, that have watched my live stream know that I really wasn't feeling them at all until uh, I saw some of those first-party games. And that's what made me kind of decide that I wanted to get on board with uh, some of the next-gen consoles. So, honestly, I'm probably going to be picking up both. And that's kind of where I stand with them. So, what about you guys? Uh, well, uh, yeah, right now, um, you know, from just the stuff that's been released and watching, you know, E3 and, and earlier on with uh, the, the actual initial releases, you know, when they were debuting the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, you know, I was kind of leaning towards more the, the PS4 at this point, uh, you know, yeah. the price point and, you know, I kind of... I don't know. I like the way they, they, they sold me a little bit better, I think, uh, than what Microsoft's doing at this point. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. You guys? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would agree. What do you guys think? Yeah, I guess for me, it's uh, the exclusives. Um, there's not much difference from the system to me, the base system. Right. And they, they seem to be trying to mimic each other's um, features. So it's really what games are developers making for that one particular system. And I've been a PlayStation guy since the last gen. I didn't get an Xbox until the PlayStation outage. So um, <laughs> that was a big hit, but that's what happened. But so I've always liked my PlayStation exclusives they had there. So I'm, I'm liking the continuation of some of those in the next gen. So yeah. that's launch day for me at least. I'll get an Xbox when, when it gets down in price a little bit, probably next year sometime. But yeah, launch for me is PS4 probably. That's cool. Okay, well, okay. I, 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 I'll be the only original bastard here. I'm actually leaning towards the Xbox here, <laughs> and this is why. Okay, number one, I haven't had a console since the very first Xbox, okay, and I just got a 360 for Christmas. Um, I've never been a big fan of, I had a PlayStation 1 way back when. I was never a fan of any of the PlayStation's uh, uh, controllers, uh, uh, the uh their online system has always been kind of hit or miss and all that kind of stuff where Xbox has always been pretty solid for the most part. Um, I, I agree with Dins where they're really trying to mimic each other. And then in, on the flip side, one like PlayStation is really punching Microsoft in the face hard. And yeah. it's really kind of like yeah. the flip side of what's happened in the past couple of years. If, you've ever, if you remember, mm -hmm. PlayStation has always been lagging behind Xbox and so forth, marketing and development and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to run out and buy a console the minute they launch. I'm not pre-ordering or anything, but I, I really I think I'm going to stick with Xbox mm -hmm. because it's to me it's just a whole more uh, a, a stability issue. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. easier to it's easier to stream not because it has the built-in streaming because I don't think that you're going to get any better than like 480p out of that. But I already have the setup to stream everything and every, and with the PlayStation it's such a hassle. 
I'm going to be the lone guy out here and say <laughs> I'm going to go Xbox. No, you, know, you know what, Kev? You make, you make really good points uh, yeah. on that as well. And it almost, you know, it, it seems it's almost cyclical in, in, in a way that, you know, PlayStation 2 was kind of the name of the game there for a long time. And I, I think when that next generation PS3, Xbox 360 came out, PlayStation was riding high on their, you know, their previous what they did. They, they came out at a high price point. They came out later than the Xbox 360, yeah. and they were just riding the fact that hey, we were, you know, we were kind of king of the hill there for for a while with the PlayStation 2, and that didn't really help them. I mean, they kind of crashed and burned on that. And so now, you know, peaks and valleys. So now they're coming back around again, and they're hitting those points that a lot of you know, basically the fans, what, what the gamers were looking for, you know, all the things that we heard leading up to the announcements of both of them, mm -hmm. you know, said things like, you know, we're going to go, Microsoft said, we're going to go in this show, we're going to forge a new path. And hey, kudos to you on that. I'm, I'm a big fan of you trying to blaze your own trail and stuff. <laughs> but at the time, I don't know if it was really the, the best idea because they kind of went all in with that. And instead... You know, PlayStation took the opposite view of it and said, this is what our gamers want. This is, they want a console that can play games. I want to be able to trade games. I want to be able to turn in my old games. I want to be able to take them back. Basically, I want a better version of what the last generation had. And then you throw in a couple of extra bells and whistles. Now, Microsoft is now doing kind of the same thing. But instead of going with the approach PlayStation did, I think they instead said, here's all the great new stuff we can do. And mm -hmm. I think the message got lost and all the, the core gamers just said, whoa, whoa, time out, time out. Nope, not a big fan of that. I, I want something to play my games on. And so yeah, it was more of a marketing right. thing. You yeah, know? yeah, you're I, absolutely right. I mean, you, you make a really good point. When the Xbox One, when they, when they debuted it, um, it was, oh, look at all the stuff, cool stuff we can do with your TV and sure. all this kind of stuff and it's and and all of us you know and I, hey look i'm an xbox fanboy i'll freely admit it openly right now <laughs> hello okay um <laughs> uh you know you're gonna sit there and where's the games where's the games where's the games okay nifty i can watch the prices right on my xbox hoopity free <laughs> <Whoopity -doo. laughs> where hoopity do <laughs> where's the games you know what i mean and then it's like oh you're doing a halo show yeah, okay, I'll make sure to watch that on my okay. Xbox TV. Ooh, where's right. the games, you know? Right. No, I will, and that turned a lot of people off, and it really yep. kind of bothered me, and I was like, well, they really better blow the doors out mm -hmm. on uh, at E3, yep. uh, because, you know, it reminded me a, a lot of, if we remember PS4's debut, where they didn't debut anything, it was just the controller, and now has a share button. Remember, everybody was share, making fun of that. Button. You know what I mean? Yep. Hey it almost, it almost, <laughs> see, hey it almost seemed like Xbox went and said, or Microsoft said, "Look at what they did. We don't really have to do much either." You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think, I think, I think uh, for the past couple of years, PlayStation's thunder was really stolen, just like you said, uh, uh, dirty, and they really went back to basics. Which, from a business point uh, standpoint and a marketing standpoint, is just the absolute way to go. Microsoft trying to innovate and everything like that, mm -hmm. great idea, but the price is right, just. <laughs> <laughs> Bah, 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 bah. Let me spin the wheel myself on with the connect, you know. Like, oh, you know I, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm still laughing at the whole everybody who's trying to sell the connect starts off by things. It can tell what you're doing. It can even look and see what your blood flow is like. Okay, that's too much. I'm yeah, sorry. Was well, anybody else freaked yeah. out by that? Yeah, yeah it's a, a little cool bit. Thing. Yeah, it's a little bit creepy. NSA, NSA <laughs> loves uh, the X, new Xbox Connect, right? I'm sorry, I'm now, sorry. I, my, my whole thing was like like my Xbox. I did not get a connect with it. And my, I, look, I got a Wii in the back that my son never plays, you know, and I don't play that garbage. Um, I, I'm playing a game. Look, I want to sit like a lump on my butt and, and just do nothing. I don't want to sit there and be dancing and jumping right, around. Right. Look, I'm not working yeah. out the hell. I don't want to have to do hand controls to pull up my inventory. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, you're, I don't need somebody that. walks in your house, you're going, 
Another thing, we're going to have a seizure or something. <laughs> right. should, we, should we call that like, bite down on this? Yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, 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 you know. <laughs> but no, I'm, go- I'm going to get the Xbox, but I'm, I'm definitely going to wait. I'm definitely mm. the type of waiting gamer, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I will see, I, I'll see like trailers and stuff, be like, okay, yeah, that looks really cool. Mm-hmm. But for my years of playing MMOs, man, and, and you know, going from... Um, you know, a new MMO comes out and be like, man, this is going to be great. And you run out and you buy it and you spend 60 bucks and you do the subscription. And then you go, this sucks ass. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I've just learned my lesson that in my years of gaming that I am okay to wait for a bit. Okay. All right. I will, I also wonder just to add one more thing to this, sure. that Xbox has always had these exclusivity, um, deals with publishers and it seems like playstation has tried its best or sony i should say has tried their best to eke in on a lot of those and call of duty is the biggest one um for the cross-platform things where they always had the xbox xbox exclusivity where they got the first dlc and they got oh better on xbox so i think playstation is trying to really pull the rug out from under them and a lot of other developers because they're making it this is the developer system this is where you want to go develop games And you can see there's a, Ubisoft is doing a lot more with PlayStation than they do with Xbox. Um, and there's a number of other games. Even EA and Battlefield have had PS3 exclusives first um, as opposed to Xbox. So I think that's that's another big thing we're kind of missing. We don't know all of them yet. Mm-hmm. Right. But I have a feeling and, Sony's going to have some of those deals where you can only get certain things on the PlayStation. Yeah, and, you know, I, I, I think you're right to an extent. And I, I think Microsoft has either been very, A, lax in a... Um, uh, 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 talking about that mm-hmm. or they just don't um so i uh, really i i think uh sony is doing a great job in really pushing their product their you know the product product itself the exclusives and everything like that while mm, xbox and microsoft just kind of seems seem to be kind of sitting back and going hey look we're the king of the hill and right you're either going to buy it or you're going to they're, they're don't. falling into that playstation 3 trap exactly yep. <laughs> exactly and and especially with the price and everybody you know yep. yeah the price difference is because you got to have the connect okay right. well yeah. 50 bucks eh, you know whatever okay but uh <laughs> yeah you're absolutely right then i really do like the the way sony's opened its arms to indie developers and yeah that's great i have a feeling you're gonna get a lot i mean i know microsoft has you know, you have to have like a published license to get to get your indie game on their console, and that's it's very restrictive. And, and you know, we know we we've played a ton of Steam games. We've watched Rafael and Dan's and yourself mm-hmm. play a lot of different Steam games. Not all of them are great. Some of them are are diamonds in the rough, and they're wonderful. And, and it's it's good to see Sony kind of opening and embracing that. Uh, because I think that's really going to help them in the long run. Because for you, you know, for the for the majority of our group who do a lot of PC gaming, we can get in and jump on that. But when you're trying to expand that to the console people that aren't really PC gamers, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to have their first go at like Don't Starve and stuff like you know those yeah. type of games, which are fun games. That I'm going to assume, well, I think Don't Starve, you get, uh, with PS4, you're getting it free in the first month anyway, with yeah. uh, PSN. Yeah. Um, they're they're going to hand it to you. So, I mean, that's just one example, but, you know, think down the line and stuff that's even currently already out there, that they can put a lot of content, a lot of indie content that's out there, you know, and if, if the pricing's right, you know, the $5, the nine ninety nine thing, they're, they're gonna make they're gonna make bank they're gonna get mm-hmm. fans because of that they're gonna they're gonna draw some PC fans I think to, to check out the experience and mm-hmm. you know and you're gonna open that up to regular console games who aren't PC gamers and I think that's just smart business on, on their end because they're mm-hmm. not restricting that they're not putting up like the walled garden and they're kind of making that a little bit open and again i think that's just another step in the right direction for them this this time around this this generation around i i, I applaud them for that okay yeah i mean i i think i think you're right i mean I, you know i still think you know and, and here's my procrastination type of thing that comes in it's still kind of too early to tell we don't know what M- microsoft is going to do mm-hmm. on the flip side my guess is that they're going to do the same as they've always done which is 
um, okay, we'll give you, we're not going to give you anything, but we'll offer this at a discounted price of, you know, like 600 Microsoft points or 250 Microsoft points or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the whole indie type thing, I think, I think that indie developers will still, when you, when they look at the numbers um, of, of people who are on, say, Xbox Live versus PSN, they're still going to go towards Xbox, um, X, uh, Xbox Live uh, and their uh, marketplace in the arcade. Unless the numbers swing, uh, the num membership numbers swing drastically in yeah. PlayStation's favor, and I don't see that happening overnight. I think, I think, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this. It's not meant as a as a as a rude term, but the PlayStation fanboys will always be PlayStation fanboys. The Xbox fanboys are always going to be Xbox fanboys. So those are the type of people where the numbers are going to stay stagnant. They're going to go and get their their favorite console of choice, mm -hmm. and then that'll be that. It, it'll be up to everybody else. Who, like some of us, are still sitting on the fence, not sure which way to go, yeah. um, uh, and everything like that. But I mean, I think, I think you guys are right that play, that Xbox ha and Microsoft need to have some kind of a system like uh, Sony and PSN does, where, hey, you know, and and it's and they're not doing it. Their PlayStation Network isn't do, um, giving you free stuff just because they're nice people. They're throwing sure. nuggets out there to hope that you get more, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I mean, you know, Microsoft and Xbox would be smart to do the same thing, you know what I mean? And, and, and I think they don't, they don't, they're gonna end up having to advertise their, um, uh, their indie section or whatever right. more uh, than they already do, I think. But I mean, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I, I'm anxious to see the pre-sale numbers. I'm anxious to see, uh, uh, like, first quarter sales numbers and, and see where that goes. I think Sony's going to beat um, Microsoft out just because uh, Sony uh, can distribute in a lot more countries right off the bat than yeah. uh, Microsoft and Xbox can. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. like in Japan, Sony has Sony first has shot at everything. Yeah. They have, you know, and and you know. So you kind of have to discount those numbers and everything like that because uh, Microsoft and Xbox are being prohibited from being in there. In the but it's going to be interesting to see, I'm, and I'm, I'm actually looking really forward to it. Definitely. So what do you guys think about the pricing and how uh, the PS4 doesn't come with a camera and the Xbox One has the, the built-in connect? Do you think it's like a gimmicky th kind of a thing? People are going to be pushed more towards the PS4? In this economy, I think I, I don't know. Fifty bucks is gonna is is really going to the people who are going to buy consoles. I don't think fifty bucks either way is gonna make or break them. Mm -hmm. But you know, in this economy, you can never tell. Right. The extra fifty dollars, if you look at the Xbox, it looks like you get more because you get the Connect and you get the you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But I mean, really. You take the connect out. You take that fifty bucks out. They're pretty much on par. I don't. I don't. I, I don't. I, I think yeah. they're too expensive. I mean, that's just my opinion yeah. for for the technology that's involved uh, no. there. That's like four, four, five years old, comparable PC technology. Yeah. No, I, and I agree. Uh, I think in the initial reveal uh, was the biggest kind of kick to them was, you know, Microsoft comes comes right out. Yep, four ninety nine, and it comes with this. And then Sony kind of undercuts them by a hundred bucks during that initial, yeah. uh, you know, debate. I, I think that really, that beginning word of mouth mm -hmm. got to everybody. Hey, there's a hundred dollars difference here, mm -hmm. and like you said, Kev, well, they're they're both systems are fairly on par spec wise, and and you know a lot of the exclusivity of the games. It's, not as exclusive anymore. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of crossover, more crossover. I think coming up in this generation um, than what than what we've seen in the past. And so you know, initially, you know, a month ago, two months ago, it was boom, hundred dollar difference. Well, that's an eye opener right off the bat because you could say that right off the bat. Now that there's been changes in place, and like you said, with if you need the PlayStation Eye to get better value or, or that better experience out of it. Like I said, there's a $50 difference right there that makes mm -hmm. that up. So, you know, and when, when you're really comparing one versus the other on the day both consoles go, you know, go live to be purchased, uh, again, I don't think it's that big of a difference, but initially when the hype was the highest for both, 
you know, PlayStation came out, kind of kicked them in the teeth with a hundred dollar yeah, less yeah. console. You well, know? yeah, I mean, and, and, and if you remember way back when, when PS3 was released, what did they? Oh yeah, six hundred. Six hundred. Six hundred. And what they do was it at E3 or their own unveiling? It was like six ninety nine, and the crowd just erupted. In they booed. Yeah. yeah. I think that Sony way, took. Yeah. Sony remembered that. They're writing one, that you know down. I mean, they they really yeah. remember that one, and 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 yeah, you know, and you. Xbox's, Microsoft's biggest mistake, I think, was having that unveiling uh, where they showed nothing but TV's crap. And, and, <laughs> and you know, people are going, well, how much does it cost? You know what I mean? And, you know, it, it just seemed kind of like one-handed, you know, what the other was doing and all this kind of stuff. Um, I, I think, like Dirty said, it's pretty much a wash at this point if you want the same th I mean, in order... To compare price, you got to compare apples to apples because you know. Then you're looking at a fifty buck, dif fifty dollar difference. We spend yeah. 50, 60 bucks on a game. On a game, right? Yeah. But see, but see, that's that's where Microsoft, I think, <laughs> deserve that kick in the teeth because you don't have to buy the PlayStation. I. It's optional. I mean, it really is. I mean, you could buy the console right. as is, <laughs> out of the box, plug it in, go buy a game, throw it in there, play it. Whereas you, you have no choice but to get an, yeah. an Xbox One with the connect there's no unless that's going to change which it might you know there's already rumors about it but as of right now you're forced you're forcing me to buy a piece of technology that i may or may not be interested in mm -hmm. uh you know and, and i might be interested in it later on down the line if you show me some games that really you know take advantage of it mm -hmm. but why are you forcing me to buy it up front and mm -hmm. i don't i don't like when other people tell me what i have to do with my money you no, know, you're I mean, absolutely right. That, that, and, I, don't, and, I don't appreciate that. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I mean, that that's a great opening because everybody who's sitting on the fence could go, well, you know what, this is complete bull crap. I can just go out and buy a PC. Yeah, and it's yeah. the same price. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Okay, I won't get the exclusives from Xbox or PlayStation, but you know what, I got Steam, I got Valve, I got all the, 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 you know, I have all this kind of crap. I can go ahead and get a ton of games. And, uh, you know, and, and plus, I think if you look at it, man, the, the stuff that they showed at E3 and stuff was all very, 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 very pretty. But think about it. Arm <laughs> hair, dolls, uh, <laughs> you know, all this kind of stuff. away from you. Come on. Uh, <laughs> on really? We've had arm hair in games since like 2007. Come on, get on our level. Trace you know FX. What I mean? so, yeah, Trace, Trace, FX. FX. Trace FX is like, we've had physics for, I mean, God knows how long. So, I mean, there's still, for those of us who do, who, who do console and PC gaming, I think we look at it and we are extremely unimpressed by both. And we're like, right. come on, you know yeah. what I mean? And you're looking at, you're looking at four, five, you know, you get a couple games or something with, or, or, or you know, uh, uh, games or any other type of uh, accessories that they'll sell, and you're looking at six hundred bucks, mm -hmm. regardless of the uh, one you buy. You know what I mean? Yeah, you you know. So I, us PC gamers who, who who choose PC first are kind of like, come on, man. You know, it's really uninspired. <laughs> I, I gotta say, for the next generation, I'm kind of uninspired. You know, it's kind of <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah. This is you know, next gen. Uh, well, what do you think yeah, about yeah. what do you think about Xbox's like business model? Because it seemed like they were rolling down the path like Steam. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, yep. that's really what it was, and Steam is hugely, widely successful. And why but, couldn't you know, the Xbox they, do it? They didn't sell it like Steam. Now, yeah. now, if Microsoft came out and said, you know, because of the restrictions, or maybe they obviously wouldn't call it restrictions, right. but the okay. but with the twenty four hour online check-in the you know buy the disc download it to your hard drive really take advantage of the xbox live marketplace if if they were to come out and say we're going to have regular sales you know like like steam winter and summer sales and uh i mean where, where you can get good games at a good discount that might be a year or two older or something like that that's you know that now you're selling me on it but they never came out and said that. They never they never sold me on the fact that we're going to be the console Steam box sort of deal, you know, with the ability to play our console games. And, mm. and you know, if they would have been more forthright with that and said that's the direction they're trying to go in, well, one, you got to convince console players of that first. 
because you know us PC gamers know that we know how Steam works. A lot of us utilize it all the time. Um, but the console people you're trying to win over, those are the ones you have to explain how this thing works and, mm. and make them want to buy it because of it. So, you know, I like the idea, and, and um, you know, I feel bad because they're they're trying to innovate, and I don't have a problem with innovation. But you got to have your message more clear, you know, w- with what you're trying to do. Mm. And if that's if that's the direction you want to go in, you want to go in the kind of a steam box direction, and, and you know, well, then show me the benefits of it. Yeah. Show me those sales and everything that, that make me go out and buy the four or five dollar games and then make me want to spend sixty dollars for the triple A title. <laughs> well, I wonder. Go, go ahead, Jim. No, okay. no, go ahead, Jim. I just wonder if Steam uh, had any PR going, whoa, whoa, don't talk about us like Xbox. Don't talk about us about what's going on with the CRM. Don't talk about us about not having <laughs> <laughs> You love Steam, and here's a sale. Um, because in all reality, those people don't realize they don't own their games on Steam. You don't own your games yeah. on Origin. No, you don't. You're you don't want to play them if Steam is gone online. <laughs> yeah, what if the servers go down for them, the, yeah. the servers that the game company owns? You know, you can't play it. So... It's not like you own a physical copy. Yes, you download it, but if it can't, it can't connect to Steam to validate, mm-hmm. it's going to go, whoa, 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 you don't get to play this today. Yeah, but um, if I'm out $5 or $10 right. because I paid that, I'm. I, you know what? I can swallow that pill. Sure, sure. The price is different, but <laughs> I'm just saying that the, the whole PR nightmare they had about how, you know, you don't own it unless you connect to the internet every day to download the, the updates and get right. validation. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't talk about those things. No. No. But, 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 but I, I'll tell you what, Denz, on that flip side, on, on that thing, yeah, it was a PR nightmare, but how do you, how do you make, okay, let me be perfectly fl- frank and blunt here. When am I not? How do you make a turd look like just something <laughs> wonderful? You know I what I'm saying? It's like, here's this thing, and you're going, I got to talk this up and make this look pretty. Um, yeah. I, I'll bet you money, they, they for, probably for some kind of reason, uh, they couldn't say this is going to be like a Steam oh, sure. or Xbox right, or something right. like that. But also you got to think about the, like, the, the pure console people. Are not really familiar with Steam, right? right. And, that's, and the ones that they are, and you have to sell to them. But how do you do that without saying it's like this other kind of thing on well, the PC that you don't know about? But yeah, trust us, right. it works on PC, and you know it's it's hard to do. Well, that's um, why they're paying you know six figures to their marketing department to you know get that to figure out how to put that in words and get it out there. And in the past two months, <laughs> they've really been earning their yeah. salary, haven't they? <laughs> Right? It's I'm like, pretty sure on, they're know. all fired at this point. Hire two, me. Words. I, you know. two words for that marketing division that they need to hire me that they said that I could easily do water cooler. That's all water I want. Cooler. There you go. There you go. It's the new water, water the, the, yeah. the new water it's cooler. New juicer. Right? Yeah, it's, it's a juicer. It's a juicer. Well, also, <laughs> after after both uh, conferences, a lot of the press were getting clear pictures from everybody on the Sony side and then on the Xbox side. They were getting different stories about it. Everybody was yeah. getting pulled in every direction, yeah. so there was no clear-cut picture. And right. a lot of people were turned off about that. A lot of the journalists wrote articles about that. And Again, know. the left hand uh, not knowing what the right hand is doing and vice yeah. versa. You know what I mean? It, it just sends so many mixed signals, and you could tell because it's like it almost seemed like Microsoft re- or, or, or the people who were at the conferences – Really didn't either agree with uh, what what the Xbox One was doing or mm-hmm. and Microsoft was doing with it or or they didn't know how to sell it, right. so they were told, "Don't talk about it." So they were sitting there <laughs> trying to give do these it, do it. half-assed, you know, around the corner answers that you would expect from like a politician, mm-hmm. except yeah. they're not dumb enough to be a politician so i mean you know it just really came out poorly you know what i mean and it, and it left everybody scratching their heads and here i am i'm an xbox fanboy going i've got a turd how do i make this smell good you know what i mean and oh man it, it left a bad taste in everybody yeah. well, it, just, mean, it seemed like they were not prepared they were not ready to, to move forward with this but they didn't want to take a chance uh, that they were going to release behind micro or by behind Sony. I mean, look what happened to Sony because they were what a year after Xbox 360 came out, or maybe a little bit less than that. But you know that really hurt their market share. And so, you know, maybe the winds were blowing out there. They were saying, "All right, Sony's looking to have something ready and in stores at the end of this year. 
Mm-hmm. We need, I mean, I'm just, you know, it just sounds like they weren't prepared to do that. I think they may, may have been looking forward to 2014, but we're not ready to release this in 2013. And so they started cobbling everything together and throwing mm-hmm. it together and just, and it sounds that way when they go out there and they're talking about it. And it's just, it just, in this media, the way it is, where you can get information instantly at your fingertips on the internet, mm-hmm. you got to have some kind of clear, concise message that's yeah. going out there. Because otherwise, well, I got a tweet over here that said, you know, it, it's going to be, oh, you have to check every 24 hours. I got another tweet over here that says, oh, well, no, you don't have to do that. And it's like, well, all right, whatever. Screw you guys. I'm going, mm-hmm. I'm going to get the other one. Absolutely. <laughs> and, <laughs> absolutely. And, you know, E3 <clears throat> was really the time to sell the product. And, and really, as... You had, I, what was it, a month or so from, or a couple weeks from E3, of, from the original debut of the Xbox One to E3. They should have been briefed or, or this kind of, you know what I mean? Hey, look, I'm a business major in finance, you know, I, I've worked in banking and stuff. I kind of know how this stuff works when you try and when you develop a new product. It seems almost, though, Dirty, is like they found out what Sony was planning to do and they said, oh, no. And so they said, <laughs> we got to figure out what we're going to do. And then somebody went home, saw their cable box on their TV, and went, <laughs> What if we made one of them? And, and brought in their cable box and threw a connect on top of it and said, Xbox One, bro. There you go. And Good. Yeah, that's it. 600 Good. bucks, bro. You know what I mean? It's like, Drop, not Drops the mic and just walks out. My whole thing <laughs> walks is, out of the meeting. If you're thick, thank you. Be sure to tip your waitress. Boom. Um, you know, I, my whole thing is, you know, if they weren't prepared, Hey, look, man, Xbox has a huge market share. I mean, they've oversold PlayStation, I don't know, probably how many times over. Yeah. Let X, let PlayStation go ahead and debut their stuff. It, it's very surprising to me, but it seems like they had no idea what PlayStation was planning or doing, mm-hmm. which just seems to me like they didn't have their ear to the ground at all. Yeah. Okay? So go if that was the case, go ahead, let them debut their stuff. Let them get the first bites out there. Hey, look, uh, Sony debuted PS3 first. We came in with the uh, 360 and blew them out of the water. Yeah. We'll just go ahead and see what they put on the street and make it better. You yeah. know what I mean? It just kind of seems like, you know, oh, my gosh. I just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so by the We don't want to get you all riled up there, Kev. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> like, nah, nah. So nah, let, me, just... let me ask you guys this. Do you guys think that first-party games would be a reason to purchase a system? Solely. Uh, what, just the I mean, third party game, like the exclusives? Like the exclusives. Like, do you think that's a reason just to get an Xbox or a PS4? Not in my opinion, though. No. No. Maybe not so much today as it has been in, in, in generations past. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but between the... If you have one of the one of the two consoles and a PC, <laughs> I mean, you can pretty much cover all your bases for the most part. Uh, for the most part, you know, like Titanfall uh, looks like it's going to be a great game. Uh, I believe it's been confirmed it is getting going over to the PC. Um, so, all right, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I can yeah, yeah. I can now go PlayStation and say, all right, well, I'm still going to get that really cool game because I that's the one that really piqued my interest during E3. And I don't have to pay five hundred bucks for arm hair. Exactly, and I don't have to, you know, the fish swim in the other way. But the fact that I know that I, I have the ability to play it on the PC, that's good. But that's us talking as like PC gamers as yeah, well. Now, sure. You're talking strictly console gamers. You know, then it really does. You know, are you are you, do you love Halo? Then you know, you know who you're going with. Do you do you love uh, you know Killzone? Well, you you know who you're going to go with on that one. I mean, it, those are. But but I think the amount of exclusives ha- have really kind of shrunk, uh, mm-hmm. you know, th- than it has been in past generations. One of the, the game I'm going to talk about today, um, well, the previous version of the game I'm going to talk about today, but uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, is now going to be cross-platform, and mm-hmm. it used to be PlayStation exclusive. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that would be a really good, if you're a PlayStation fan, you know, it's a great, fun game to play. <laughs> But it's going to be on, it's going to be on Xbox now. So that's another one of those exclusive games that's now going across the board. And so, I don't know if it carries as much weight really any more than it used to in the past. I mean, I just it just seems that gap has shrunk a lot. And I uh, I, I agree with you, Dirty. And I think it's I think it's because also um, 
I think the developers who primarily used to develop for um, uh, uh, consoles only have realized that, hey, you know what, we've got probably a bigger market out here, or at least of an equal share of PC gamers. And we're kind of cutting ourselves off at the knees by just offering it on one console. There's PC gamers who would love to play right. this. You yeah. know, there's there's Xbox gamers who'd love to play. We make more money. Exactly. And mm -hmm. that's why that, that gap is, will continue to shrink because it's all about the almighty dollar at the end. Mm -hmm. And the more cons or the more, you know, systems I can get my game on, the more money we're going to make. I mean, it's, exactly. it's as simple as that. So. Exactly. And yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Who is actually sitting here looking? I mean, Let's be honest here. I don't know if you guys are. I'm not busting you if you were, but if you're going to sit there and look at just the exclusives of each platform, you're not looking at price. You're not looking at anything else and going, wow, I get two more exclusives with this one, so that's the one I'm going to buy. Right. I don't think anybody's really done that. I really don't. They might look through the exclusive list to see if their favorite game <laughs> is on there. <laughs> I did. But they did. Okay. <laughs> May call, but I did right. that. I did no. that. But, I mean, yeah, you did it, but it wasn't your sole deciding factor sure. is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So I think, in, I think exclusives are a nifty bonus. I don't think it really necessarily sways people one way or the other anymore, especially because I think, in a nutshell, you look at the graphics of both anymore – and it's pretty darn similar if you yep. took a look at the gameplay video. You, you, get, you know, you go, yeah. is that Xbox? Is that, uh, you know, what, you know? So maybe it swayed some people one way or the other, and God bless them. But if it's an exclusive, <laughs> hooray. All right. If it's as not, that guy, I'll, I'll speak to this. <laughs> is that guy? <laughs> uh, when I looked at the systems, you're absolutely right. There's not much difference between that and a low end PC right now. Mm -hmm. And. A lot of developers now can develop for the PlayStation um, much easier because they're not, they're making it easier to develop like it would be for an Xbox. Because it used to be Xbox developed first, ported to PC, ported to PlayStation, actually, for a lot of games. Or PC, then Xbox, and even harder for PlayStation. But since they're making it easier, I looked and said, well, what are they trying to do that's different? How are they trying to harness the system? Or do they have some sort of exclusivity deal? And there are some games that I was like, I kind of want to play that. So PS4 has a bigger selection this time than Xbox in a lot of ways. So there's some big titles on Xbox, but I think PS4 has a lot more a variety of exclusives to look at. So for me, it was like I could go either way since PlayStation is a little cheaper and it's going to have a few more exclusives. I'll probably stream them, want to try and stream them. I'm going to go with that. So I'm one of those guys because I'm, I'm more about you know the, the other kind of games that most people don't normally play. Um, I mean, there's nothing so, wrong with that. I wasn't, yeah, I, no, I wasn't no, no, trying no. to make fun, but I mean, it's like, for me, it's like exclusives. Yeah, they're nice, but no, uh, it's, my no. whole thing is, is it coming out on PC? That's the first right, question right, I always right, ask, right, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Halo well, brings up a good point. Um, he, he says they should initially design on PC and then bring stuff to consoles. I think a lot I, of people... I think it's I think it's too difficult to do that because of yeah. the limitations within a console itself and and I mean what if you look saying? at it even the Xbox One and PS4 have hardware in it that we had in our PC uh, PCs 4 years ago 5 years ago so while it's next gen it's really not next gen to PC gamers so I mean you'd have to re I mean if they did that they would put it out on PC and us PC gamers would go what is this four-year-old look, five-year-old looking garbage? I mean, what is this? I mean, no, I mean, okay. As an example, all right, and I'm I'm gonna be hated on for this one, but Dirt Defiance, Dirt Defiance, the game, it looked pretty good on piece on 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 Xbox and stuff like that, but on PC. And look, man, I played WoW for like six years. Okay? So <laughs> we're not talking like I am like the graphics king. But I'm sitting there on on PC playing this thing, going, "This thing looks like garbage." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, it, it it really does not look good. So I mean, I think there's always going to be that separation and 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 in development. That's what I think. And, and you know what? Uh, I do like the fact, though, that it seems that both of these consoles have more PC-friendly architecture in them. So hopefully you, we will see some more maybe PC-driven games initially that can be kind of dumbed down or graphically brought down a little bit because the architecture is, is 
much more similar you know the x86 much more similar to what they're already building off of um so you, you're going to get hopefully some some more of those pc games again they're probably going to be dumbed down some whereas the last couple of generations of consoles it was you know like comparing apples to pancakes i mean it's just not it just wasn't there it was a lot of work for them to get it there so at that point they're like you know we're not going to spend the money uh, on doing that but now that they're a little bit closer granted there are other difference, graphical differences, and, and and the like. But now that the architecture is a little bit closer, I'm kind of hoping we get to see some more, you know, PC type games that are brought down, and even some console games that are kind of scaled up and brought out to the PC. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's feasible, but if you know, if what the specs that I'm seeing out there are, are true, I think we have a better shot this generation to see that kind of happening than we have mm-hmm. in generations past. I mean, I'll, I'll give you two examples of games that were fantastic on console, but just stink for a myriad of reasons when they got ported over to PC. Assassin's Creed 1 and 2. I defy you to play <laughs> those two things with a mouse and keyboard. I defy you on PC. The controls are so bad. I had to go out and buy an Xbox controller to be able to play that. I mean, you know, I, you have those type of porting issues, and I think you probably mm-hmm. always will. I mean, just because, I don't know if it's because of the architecture of the console versus the PC, and where the, or it's just like, hey, you know what, we're just going to run it through this program, zip it through this program to port it, and there you go, nifty nifty, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, they're still pretty games. I mean, don't get me wrong, Assassin's Creed 1's still a little bit older, you know, and stuff like that, but for the time it was it, it's pretty good but insofar as porting and controls and sound and stuff like that yeah really leaves a lot to be desired so you're right there yeah i i hope we see a lot better a lot better compatibility with porting yeah sure. F- fingers crossed i mean because that's that's a win for all of us that's oh yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely but we'll see how it plays out Okay, what are your all thoughts on the Connect and the fact that it's self-aware? And let me let me emphasize on this. <laughs> self-aware. It can uh, it knows when you're the user that's been assigned to that profile. It also knows when there's a stranger in the room. Right. It's, like Santa, it's like Santa Claus. Knows when you're sleeping. <laughs> knows when you're awake. <laughs> knows when you've been bad or good. <laughs> so don't get naked for goodness sake. Um, <laughs> I mean that that really that really tells me that the machine is going to be on all the time if the sensor is on because it's going to know your 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 user that's sitting in front of the 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 console whether it's the right person or not. So isn't that kind it, of creepy? I, I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be like on an on a constant on this how I watching everything you're doing, you know, try and like open up your windows to have you sucked out into the vacuum of outside, I guess, for us gamers, you know, that'd be like, ah. um, I, I think it's going to be like on a passive type of thing where the microphone might be on all the time so that it, when it hears like that Xbox on type mm-hmm. of command or whatever, yeah. it recognize that voice, voice pattern and turns on. Um, if, like I'm fapping in front of the TV for whatever reason. I don't want like the channels to start to change and whatnot. You know, whatever. Race is right. You know, it's like, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, it I, sounds I, like you're interested in horse yeah, racing. What is that? Horse race, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> or Aunt B comes up on the TV. You know, it just kind of ruins the moment. Um, no, I, I, I'm not. I'm not one of those type of people that's like, oh my god, you know, they might be watching me. Yeah, you know, it, you know, because the last thing you need is, hey, honey, can you give me that bag of Doritos? And you turn your Xbox on, and you have fifty-three, you know, ads for Doritos because it heard you say the key word. <laughs> or you know, now, if hey, it did I that, the- I would be, I would be pissed off. I'd be like, okay, you're trying to mind me without me knowing. That's, like, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. No, I don't know that. I don't know. <laughs> But for anybody else who thinks it's like this nefarious type of thing, like, you know, Bill Gates is secretly staring into your living room or wherever, you know, it's kind of like, and, you know, if you're that concerned, just unplug the damn thing. I mean, really, I mean, go in the back and just go, plunk, and unplug it. But your Xbox doesn't work that, and I don't like that. I don't (laughs) like that at all, dude. I don't, why do I have to have that on there to... I, I don't understand. Know how to play my games. I and, don't understand. And, and that's a personal. Pre- I mean, I don't mind. It is a personal look. preference. You're look, right. I, I, again, I'm one of those lazy bastards when they game. I sit in my chair and I don't want to move anything other than this or this or whatever. You know what I mean? So, 
if I can just sit there like a lump and go Xbox on, Xbox game, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can I can I go like Xbox play game for me? And I can just sit there and watch, you know what I mean? No, I it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm, okay. I'm not. You, you know what kind of worries me, though, is, you know, because it's coming with it and it's required to have it is, you know, what happens? You know, I have a kid she knocks it off and it breaks. OK, and well, now, now my Xbox is not going to work because I have to go out and buy a new one. <laughs> and I'm not, you know, again, I don't like that extra peripheral because you're going to handcuff me if something random happens. If, you know, yeah, you know, if my dog walks by and knocks the PSI on the floor and it breaks, well, hey, I can still play my games. I can't do Dance Dance Revolution, but hey, I can still play my games on it. Uh, if my dog walks by and knocks over my, you know, the connect and that breaks well now what you know what do i do now <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know i don't know I if can't that's turn the my case. tv on i know I, i'm just yeah, i don't know if that's the case i mean I, I understand your point with like i don't i didn't get the connect for my 360 why because i don't want it it does it make me does x i don't like being told that hey you want to play the new xbox one you got to have the connect yeah the only kind of usage it's going to get is for me to go xbox on that's it i mean you know unless they can i don't know what they're going to do else with it um but uh, you know it's just to me it is what it is like i said we still don't know what playstation has down the line yeah mm-hmm. the xbox uh, the, the playstation i or whatever it's called mm-hmm. um I, I, their system initially doesn't seem designed around like that of xbox one so um kudos to them it just it just doesn't bother me that much, but I understand with people who are like, well, what if I don't want that? I mean, I just really don't want to connect. I don't want voice recognition. I don't want anything like that, you know, or whatever. I can understand you going. I, I personally understand you going. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I understand that. All right. Well, hi, Dins's daughter. <laughs> Hello, little D. Little D. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Happy belated birthday. Happy yeah. birthday, little D. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's cover some small potatoes. Uh, now, PS4's controller got a redesign. We all know about the share button. <laughs> share that, button. That share button, bro, do you stream, son? But all it also the audiences has, uh, all the time. It also has triggers now, and that might throw off a few. I mean, I don't think it will throw off most of us. Like, Dins plays Xbox. Dins plays PS3. So he's used to the triggers, but a lot of people are used to R1 or R2 on the PlayStation. Those are the top buttons. Now they have to readjust and use these triggers. Also, the thumbsticks are still awkwardly placed, almost to the point where when you're playing with a game on PS, PS4, it looks like your thumbs will be touching. Where, you know, kind of like picture the Xbox controller and reverse the D-pad and the stick. Do you guys think think that would be an issue or people are still going to go go with like an Xbox controller? Are they interchangeable? Well, there are adapters you can get, like, to interchange your Xbox controller with your... your it's like an adapter to plug it into. Yeah, and there, there's third-party ones, too. I'm yeah. sure it'll be out fairly soon. I mean, I've seen... I've already seen third-party controllers, at least for this last generation, where you can get uh, an Xbox-type controller for your PlayStation as well. I think it was Mad Cats or something put one out. So uh, I guess that's. I don't think it's gonna bother. I mean, l- let's look. Let's look through the history of gaming consoles and their controllers. I mean, you had the Nintendo, then you had the Super Nintendo, then you had the Genesis, and look at the Nintendo 64 controller versus the PlayStation controller. They were. I mean, the yeah. Nintendo 64 controller. I love Nintendo 64, but it was awkward as hell. Yes. Um, you know, everything like that. So I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal. I've never been a fan of the PlayStation controllers. Well, neither have I. I mean, I'm, I got huge hands. It's awkward. I don't have huge hands, but I mean, it, they, they were just very awkward to hold. They were mm. very skinny and thin and kind of... And Xbox just feels better. I, I'm not one of those type of people that, that'll go out and buy a third-party controller. Um, if you're going to do Xbox, you're going to have an xbox controller i mean i i don't think it's that big of a deal for people i think we adapt and overcome that's what i think sure. insofar okay. as gaming console i know i bought um triggers basically trigger covers for the back of my playstation controller because i didn't feel comfortable with the way it was after getting xbox mm-hmm. um i did it for first person shooters and stuff as well but i, I tried to mod that a little bit uh, i have the uh, what do they call them the control freak um uh, extenders for the for the uh, axis controllers because it makes it seem like they have a little more control um, on both of my systems. I mean, it's, it's weird to think with the controllers being changed that much. And, uh, yeah. 
I, I don't know. They're, they seem like they're trying to make the PlayStation 4 a bit more like the Xbox in size. Exactly. Like it yeah, it, does, it looks bigger. So. I think they showed, somebody showed a graphic of it, but the, the controller definitely looks beefier than, mm -hmm. than the PS3, PS2 controllers did. And, and that, you know, hopefully they had that in mind. Say, hey, we're going to yep. try to capture some of Xbox's, you know, loyalties and bring them over to our side. We, they know, I'm sure they know that, you know, controller was a big deal. A lot of people bring that up. So I think they kind of beefed up their controller a little bit to maybe help with the transition. Now, I don't know. I haven't touched the new PS4 controller or anything, so I couldn't tell you, like, weight or exactly how big it is. But, you know, just from what I've seen, just from some of the pictures, it does, it does, it looks beefier. It looks a little bit bigger. Uh, the bottom parts look a little bit longer uh, that sit in your palm. So, you know, I think maybe that's their little nod to... We heard you. We're trying yeah. to, you know, we don't want to alienate our, our yeah. PS, you know, our PS fan base, but we want to try to get something out there that'll be a little bit more comfortable for any Microsoft people that want to come over. So, um, I don't know. It'll be uh, until I have to wait until it gets closer and I can get my hands on one. Uh, really. Plus, I mean, one angle we're not looking at with this is, you know, MLG play. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I don't think PlayStation is in MLG play at all. Really, I think they use Xbox exclusively, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stuff like that. So that could be another reason why PlayStation's moving in that direction yeah, because they'd Call like to see some competitive play. Yeah, competitive Call, Call of Duty was on PS3. It was P P PS3, yeah. but that that's about uh, yeah, that's well, <laughs> you know, they could be trying to move more into more MLG play. And you know, let's be honest here. And, and as an Xbox fanboy, I even have to give it to PlayStation. It seems like that they have really sat down and with gamers and said, what do you like about our system now? What don't you like? What would you like to see changed? So on and so on and so on. Their, their whole advertising thing with the worth for the gamers mm -hmm. kind of seems to be coming true. It, anybody I've ever talked to has never been a big fan of the PlayStation controllers. So right. maybe they're just following through on that same notion, I know we like to sit there and we complain to game about game companies and stuff like that more than we praise them. Mm. I think the ratio is probably 300 to 1 in favor of complaints. Um, but uh, I, I, I really think maybe PlayStation's moving in that direction. Hmm. Okay. Does Little D have any comments? Little D? <clears throat> She's like, no. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we just have a few more small topics, and then we'll get into some games, guys. Um, so they're also saying that the Vita will be able to play PS4 games. You're going to be able to stream them right onto your Vita from the PS4 console. Any thoughts on that? I, I really think if, if it's implemented as smoothly as I hope it is, it really opens the door for for them selling a lot of Vitas. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not, and I don't have one. I've seen them. I've fiddled with them a little bit. You know, there wasn't really games out there or enough games out there to kind of sell me on it. And you're talking, I got a guy that's got two DSs, two, three DSs, you know, so I, I'm, I got my hands in the, in the, the, the handheld gaming systems, but I just really didn't see anything out there Vita wise yet. I mean, besides a handful of games that really, wanted to go spend the money on now mm -hmm. with that said if they can implement this and, and you can have you know you're playing <clears throat> you're playing your game on the ps4 and you know my kid wants to watch spongebob or something and i could be like all right great and i just grab my vita and pick up where i left off you know playing granted it's a smaller screen but i can pick up where i left off and continue playing that idea if implemented correctly and and it's responsive is it would be is going to be great if it works out that way i don't know if it will it's a fantastic idea in theory but if it does you know i will i would strongly consider picking up a vita just for the added you know ease of use for my playstation 4 i mm -hmm. mean there, there's times that i would like to play that i can't play but the, you're now giving me another outlet that i can continue playing mm -hmm. Whereas in the past, I didn't have that. So I like the idea. I'd have to see it in an action first, though, before I did. I'm not going to go out, you know, day one, and I'm going to get a Vita right now. Because <laughs> I heard this, I have to see it kind of in action yeah. and see that it's responsive. But if it does and it they deliver on what they're, you know, I will strongly consider picking one up. I mean, it just, 
you know, it's it's an added, you know, hey, it's not a cheap added bonus, but it, it's an added bonus. Mm -hmm. And, and I kind of, I think that that can really work well in Sony's favor if it, if it's implemented correctly. I'm not a handheld person. The only right. handheld I've ever, you know, really messed around with is my son's 3D, uh, 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 his DS and now his 3DS. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. It's kind of like, well, okay, here's a nifty thing. It's not necessary, which is great. Um, but if you want to do it, you got to go ahead and do it on our on our uh, uh, Vita. And if I remember correctly, they're a little pricey. They oh, yeah, are they, they, a little pricey. pricey. And there's proprietary, you know, memory and yeah. stuff like that that really turned a lot of people off. I did not like yeah. that myself. Yeah. And so I, I, I kind of look at it this way. I like what Xbox is doing with their smart glass feature, where you can do it, do stuff like that on a tablet, on your on your iPhone or or other smartphone stuff like mm -hmm. that. I think that offers a lot more variety yeah, um, for a market because, I mean, other if you're over if you're under sixty years old, you have a smartphone. I should say under fifty, you know, whatever, you know, uh, and you more than likely have a, a tablet of some sort at your house uh, or a laptop or so, I don't know. Um, uh, but in so far as being able to play it on, I've, I've never been a handheld person, never had a Game Boy or anything like that. So that's kind of like, you know, hit or miss for me. Um, even, even with the smart glass thing, that was my, I was kind of like, man, they're really pushing this smart glass stuff. And like, oh boy, you know, I don't want to sit there and play a game on my iPhone 4S screen because that's just too damn small. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a nifty little extra i don't think that's a game breaker either way i really don't then yeah i think it's going to appeal to either a gamer that travels a lot or more casual that can pick it up and put it down a lot you know maybe a single parent or something or just busy parents and um you know they're going to pick up their tablet log in uh, like the division and help out their squad for like 20 minutes while they have some free time and then get back to what they got to do yeah. in real life you know yeah I think that's true yeah i, I don't think the, the vita as well it's just one of those investments, and okay, you can play your PlayStation games on this little tiny screen. Right, well, right. Well, I want to play it on a big screen. I mean, it is a small screen, right? I mean, well, I, yeah. I see that it's pretty darn small. It's like yeah. an old Game Boy screen. So it's kind of like, well, what are you going to be able to do or see? Because you look at all the other, where's the arm hair, bro? You know, like, I won't be able to see the arm hair on my Vita screen. You know, it's like, just totally destroys my gaming experience. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, well, let's just cover one more small potato topic. Uh, what do you guys think about the look of the systems, the boxy look of the Xbox versus the like PS2 kind of slim look of the PS4? Yeah, I could I could really care less. You don't care less? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it really doesn't. It's. Eh. I know there was a lot of hate behind the Xbox One and just how boxy it was. This looked like a. They brick. say it looks like a brick. To me, it's like, uh, okay. Well, I love the design of the original Xbox. I've got mine upstairs. You want me to bring it down? That thing weighed about 300 pounds. Yeah, you know, heavy. it was like picking up a VW. It was like this big. You know, that thing was a huge-ass brick, and you put a CD in it. And it was like, really? Um, you know, it, if if you have serious space issues where you the only reason you can choose one or the other, then you need to, like, dig a bigger hole that you live in or something like that because it's... <laughs> It's not an issue. I mean, what are we, Art Deco people now? Are we also, you know, like, <laughs> commenting on design? Of like, oh, yeah. You know, uh, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. One console with wood paneling would have sold me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I would have had to give a nod to that. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it doesn't bother me either way. I mean, hey, look, it, 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 I can fit something in a, in a square, you know, whatever. I... I, I think I think it, uh, uh, sexiness appeal or whatever. The PlayStation looks a little bit better in that sense. It's much mm -hmm. thinner. You know what I mean? I'm assuming you can tip it up on its side and it has a stand for that and everything yeah. like that. You can just put it flat down like a Blu-ray player or something like right. that. And uh, you know, I don't think this was unintentional, but the Xbox One kind of looks like a cable box. Yeah. Um, surprise. You know, it does. Right? Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> you know, but it is what it is. I just put it up on top of my existing cable box. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. it's Again, it's not really. I mean, now if it came out and was designed like a vase and it was see-through and it had lights running through it, it looked all cool. Oh, that, you know, I'll, give you, I'll give you a point or two for that, but otherwise, I don't really care. <laughs> it's, it's, go, it's, going on my, it's going on my shelf with the rest of my crap that I have on there. And 
will only maybe look at it to flip discs in it. You know, right. I, mean, I don't know yeah. if somebody has anybody ever walked into any one of your houses and go, "Wow, that is a really sexy, you know, pl PlayStation Three or a really sexy Xbox Three Sixty. <laughs> no. You know, it just ties the room together or whatever. <laughs> like, I don't well, think that's <laughs> if it's yeah, your like ensemble. My whole system, like my whole PC uh, system setup, is all black, and then like I've got the white Xbox. You know, no one ever goes. Right. You know, that sticks out like a horse. Yeah, that's crap. Crap. <laughs> uh, nobody cares. They're like, I don't oh, know you what got you're thinking with that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, guys. Well, that'll that'll do it for console wars. Does anyone want to uh, take five real quick? Hit the bathroom or anything like that? You guys good? Whatever. I have to take care of some family. Yeah, give, no, give, me, <laughs> give me one. Give me. I'll take five real quick. Okay, let's take five, and we'll come back, and we'll move on to games. All right. All right.
<clears throat> All right, guys, we are back. I think Big D is, um, you know, taking care of his daughter about bed about bedtime. So, um, do you guys have any questions or anything out there in chat that you guys want to discuss about the whole console wars before we before we move on to uh, some video games? Yeah, let's uh, get your questions so we can try and answer them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why isn't Kevin in a bikini? Kevin in a bikini. Um, okay, here, you must have missed a turn, but here it is. Mrs. Kev actually did go out yesterday and buy a bikini. And um, while it's very snappy and snazzy, um, there is just absolutely no way in hell, unless I got a lot of money and donations, that I was going to wear a bikini. Fear the bulge, my friend. Fear the bulge. No, um, uh, I just wasn't going to do it unless I got a lot of money and donations. Thank you. Now, if you want to go over to my stream, there is a donate button, and we'll see about maybe episode four. <laughs> right? But, you know, other than that, you know, there's got to be some give and take here. <laughs> Uh, Wiki. Hot chances for episode five, Pope. <laughs> Wiki, I was shooting for about an hour, but it looks like we're definitely going to be running over that because we're only about halfway done. So, um, go ahead, Halo. What's your question? What case should you get for what, for a new PC? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, are you are you traveling? A suitcase? Roll, or roll. What else? <laughs> roll, 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 roll. Yeah. One with wheels. That would be my suggestion. Yeah, <laughs> and and also one you know you can get the kind where you actually have like a laptop bag and go on top of it. Those are really those are nice. yeah those are <laughs> nice. Those really are nice. nice. Yeah. Um, uh, for your PC, I've always been a fan of like Cooler Master or something. Mm. Always like go twice as large as you think you need to, just for airflow. Yep. Uh, and and always make sure you keep in mind like think a year or two down uh, into the future because as you know, um, graphics card the better they get, the bigger they get. Um, uh, also, your cooling. What are you, what are you going to use? Are you ever going to want to upgrade to water <laughs> cooling or anything like that? Go like so, like Kev said, go as big as you can, so you have uh, the cable management compartment still on the backside underneath the motherboard. Big, it's nice. And Big D would agree. I mean, he always says go big. So I mean, you know, <laughs> go go big, go big, um, go big or go home. Yep. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. If you guys don't have any more questions about the console wars, we're gonna move into games. No more questions. Use games on the new consoles. Oh yeah, that's a. That's a good one. That's, that's true. Good... Well, they reversed I... Xbox reversed their used game they policy, did. so did, yeah. that's kind of huge. And I feel like honestly that they were pressured by the gaming community directly, which I think is a good thing because yeah. that means that means you know how often do us gamers sit there and constantly criticize, rightfully so, uh, game developers and stuff like that for not listening to the gamers. And here we have a major issue that for whatever reason, whether it be because of GameStop or what have you, that they said, okay, you know what? We, you're right, you're right. We'll go ahead and do it. Um, I've seen the, the majority of the reactions I've seen on the internet, which I mean, you kind of have to discount about 90% of them because they're all trolls, but it's like, well, ha ha ha, you know, they went ahead. It's like, okay, well, yeah, they realized they made a mistake go ahead and cheer them for listening to you and saying that, hey, you know, we realized we made a mistake. You guys made us see that for whatever reason, and, and we went ahead and changed it. That's what we've been wanting. And when we get that, what do we do? We end up busting their stones more. Well, you should have never had it in the first place. Well, Jesus, <laughs> if, you know, if, Can't win. <laughs> if my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. What do you want? You know what I mean? It's, it's you know, it. It was a it's a really bad it was a really bad policy. Didn't affect me because I don't buy used games because I've never had luck with them. Mm -hmm. Um it's always been a hassle. They've been scratched, what have you. Uh they've not worked. I've ended up having to take them back and then you've got a fight with like GameStop or wherever. Um uh, you know, to get them back, uh, have them take them back and everything. Just a mess. But in and I don't have any friends, so I'm not getting <laughs> um now nah, and I just don't trade games. So it really that was I understand everybody's, you know, you know, them making a big deal about it. I understand that, and it was a big deal. It wasn't mm -hmm. to me, but it was to others in the gaming community. So now, what I think, <clears throat> on the flip side of PlayStation, if people paid attention, PlayStation did the same thing as Microsoft without doing the same thing as Microsoft. Meaning, they said, 
we leave it up to the hands of the developers, mm -hmm. right. which was just kind of like another roundabout way of saying, well, well we yeah, but... don't, we, we're not making them do it. But if they do it, they do it. You know what yeah. I mean? It was kind of like. Well, see, I think, I think you make a very good point there, Kev. Uh, what happened was when they announced that, the people had their rage focused on one thing, and that was Microsoft, because it was their call, and that's what they came out with. So people had a way to direct that rage to them, whereas what PlayStation did or what Sony did was said, hey, listen, we're not going to put any of that on ours. So our in-house developed games, we're, we're not adding that kind of uh, – we're, we're not putting that out there for you. Publishers can do it if they want. So you know what? If you're going to get mad, you get mad at them. Mm -hmm. Not going to get mad at us. And so Microsoft kind of stepped up front and threw it out there right from the get-go. And, and so there was there was a place to put all that rage on. Now, yeah, like you said, who knows? When, when these like a lot of these other game developers come out, they put their own sort of DRM on there. They can't again. You still can't really get mad at Sony. It's not their fault. It's the publishers that put it out there. So, well, I'm not going to buy their game. You know, if it ticks me off that much, or if it's that intrusive, I'm not going to buy their game. Microsoft cut me off at the knees right from the get go with that idea uh, that they they're instituting their own DRM and they're telling me how I'm going to play this or, or what I'm going to do mm -hmm. with my games. And I think that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And you know what? A lot of it was probably in a delivery. Again, these guys have been a bunch of monkeys. Oh, absolutely. Around. And it's – Absolutely. Their delivery is so terrible on it that you got – once you get that fan base up in arms, you get you get the gaming community up in arms, we have a clear target at who to go at, and that's what they did. And they yeah, struck absolutely. at them hard. And Sony did, you know. They kind of took their hands off and said, hey, we're not going to put this in. We're not, no, we're, it's, we're not going to institute it. Developers might put that in. We're not, you know, we're, we're washing our hands of it. So it becomes more of a gray area of who you're supposed to be angry with. Right. Whereas Microsoft kind of took it right on the nose right from the get-go. And so everyone has said, get them. Get the torches. Get the pitchforks. That's who we're going after. And, you know, and because of it, they, they changed their policy because of it. So Yeah, I mean, and I, I you know, I, I agree with you, Dirty. I mean, Microsoft for whatever reason they did it. I mean, it just, common sense. I mean, this just goes to show you have people there with bachelor's and master's degrees mm -hmm. that if they are a gamer, they are extremely casual best. They work for Microsoft, so I'm assuming they get a butt ton of games for free. They are not engaged in the gaming community big time like we are, you know what I mean? So right. they... To me, it seems like they were shocked that people would be so angry about this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like Andy's saying in chat, you know, so um, it really made me mad because they're basically catering to gamers who just have money. I don't think that's the case. Um, I think it was a way for them to try and woo developers to their um, system. Yep. Maybe a way uh, from PlayStation. But also, we're not looking at it on the flip side from the developer's point of view. They spend millions of dollars and god knows how long sometimes two three years um to develop a game mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it costs hundreds of millions of dollars sometimes well you go ahead that's why the games are 60 bucks and then you know shit gets uh pirated you get uh you know let's trade our games back and forth buddy you know and all this kind of stuff and and whatnot the developers lose out on that money you know what I mean? Um, you, you trade it into GameStop. GameStop gives you three dollars <laughs> towards it. You know, I come into GameStop, I buy it for fifteen or twenty. Yeah. They're not sending that money to, money to the developer. You know, they're, that's going into their pocket, and you know, so on and so forth up the ladder. So it's another way for developers to uh, uh, gain more revenue from game sales. Agreed. I understand that from a business point. I mean, you, you as a, I mean, being a gamer is one thing, but also you have to look at that these are businesses. Businesses have to make money. They have to, or they're not going to be in business anymore. And that hurts all of us. You know what I mean? We see it with a lot of things. When there's no competition, what happens? You know, you get late. You know, that business gets lazy because there's nobody to compete with. So, um, you know, and competition is always good. Um, but as a, there had to have been a better way to go about doing that. Um, you know, I, I've always said like, well, okay, maybe 
they'll, Xbox would, you know, before Xbox reversed it, they'd go in uh, into a partnership or something like that with GameStop. Okay, well, we'll we'll sell you, or you you can make these um, certain kind of. I think Dirty just dropped out of the call. Yeah, Dirty dropped. Um, I think we can um, make. Uh, uh, we sell you some of these online passes or something like that that the gamer buys when he buys one of these used games that'll let him activate it. You know what I mean? Something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just, uh, but they didn't do it. So, uh, you know, I, I just think I'm just glad that they went ahead and they listened to people. I mean, okay, let's let's be honest. They made a mistake. They did this. It was brainless and it was stupid. Mm-hmm. What business doesn't make a mistake? They listened to people and they reversed it. That means that they're open to suggestion for the future, which is a good thing. And 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 PC is very easy for DRM, and you don't hear a lot of PC gamers complaining about DRM. That's true. Yeah, I think we got him back here. Did we get him back? There he is. Welcome back, sir. Uh, <clears throat> we got you dirty. Oh, we can't hear you though. <laughs> Real podcast problems. Gotcha. All right. All right. All right. Well, Cannibal had a quick question, and uh, Astro okay. had another point as well. What if their whole marketing plan was to look terrible, to go back on it, and then make themselves look good? That was Astro's uh, opinion. And Cannibal said, "Which one of the systems are we getting?" I think it's clear what Kevin's getting. I think Dirty is leaning towards the PS4. I am. Okay. I'm, I'm definitely expecting. And as far as Astro's. Um, comment slash question whatever from a business point of view okay and and being in banking and all finance and all that kind of stuff if i were f- financially backing the development and sales of xbox one which microsoft is having uh financing done uh, uh by banks and stuff for they're not purely paying this all out of pocket i'd be really pissed um that is definitely not the way to go because um a lot of these people depend on um, uh, the, the, the pre-sales, you know what I mean? The mm-hmm. pre-ordering and everything right. like that, you know, because that's when they're going to get the biggest bang for their buck. And to and first impressions are everything. And, man, especially we are a judgmental community. I hate the bash <laughs> gamer community constantly. We, we, have very, yeah. we have very, very long memories. When EA, hey, look, how many people are going to buy another SimCity? Oh. I mean, you know... Think about it, though. We're going to think really hard yeah, about it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because we're hard. going to remember. How many people still remember the Diablo 3 launch? Uh, yeah, there. with the air. Yeah. Yes. I, I, couldn't I, I play couldn't, the game for the first week. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we were comparing the SimCity launch to the Diablo 3 launch, you know? And it, it was just shocking. I'm going, I can still... Why do I still remember the Diablo 3 launch? It takes a... You leave a bad taste in somebody's mouth. Yep. You screw up real bad in the beginning of You'll lose them, and it is extremely difficult to get them back, mm-hmm. and we never forget. You know, and, that, and that's kind of part and parcel live from the get-go. When, when Microsoft announced their, you know, online connectivity check-in that has to be done, that was the first thing that popped up in my head was, what happens the moment they screw up on their end mm-hmm. for some reason? Something goes down, servers are getting updated, whatever. I can't, I can't use my console. I mean, that was the first thing. Now, I doubt that's true, but... That's the first thing that went through my head is Diablo 3, SimCity. Well, look at all the fun we had in the first you know, week or two of those games. I don't need that. If I go out and get an Xbox One day one, you know, the, the way it was originally announced with the always on DRM, you know, internet check-in and stuff. Well, if something breaks on their side, well, I got a you know five hundred dollar brick on my hands, and that's new. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I, I, like I, I understood the the, the, the um. And I'm oversimplifying. Oh, no, I understand <laughs> I mean, because because I think I think with Xbox integrating this cloud connectivity, I think that is really really neat. Your hard drive in your Xbox goes belly up. Look, crap happens. It'll happen in the PS4. Sure. It'll happen yeah. in the Xbox. You know, you're you're. you're Okay, so you pull out the hard drive, you go and get a new one, but all of your save games and stuff are saved in the cloud. Okay, so you turn it on once a day, it connects to the internet, it saves to the cloud and everything. You can pull all that stuff back down. That is fantastic. I like it. I understand people are going, well, I don't have internet at home. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, you know, I, you can't satisfy everybody, but we constantly are screaming at them to 
push the boundaries and, and make things new and all this kind of stuff. And as a PC gamer, as being always on, hey, look, how many of us don't turn off our PCs? We have an always on internet connection. You know what I mean? We might just put it to sleep or something like that. We play games on Steam. It auto, it has to connect to the internet and it has to uh, cloud sync. You know what I mean? It's it's just those those types of things. As a PC gamer, I'm like, I got to do it with my PC. So I mean, it's not a big deal with my Xbox. Yeah. If people don't have internet at home, they're, I mean, okay, do an they have an Xbox 360? Okay, I can understand that. But how old is the Xbox 360? No, who was it that said it? it? Was somebody from Microsoft when they said, you know, what about our military eyes who don't don't have that? And he said, yeah, we have a console for you. It's called the Xbox 360. And I'm like, wow, do you got a serious sack on you to come <laughs> yeah. out in an interview yeah. and tell the people, basically, sorry for you. Go by the last gen, and we got old, you know, we got some games on there that you might like. And yeah. I'm like, wow! I just the 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 balls on him. Yeah, to I mean, come out okay. in public and say that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, and, <laughs> and and, and I looked at that and I said, okay, that guy probably should have someone. Somebody should probably go up to that guy and break their foot off in his ass, <laughs> and then <laughs> fire him, and then yes. like take his firstborn child as payment. Um, a really bad PR move. I that mean, was, that, that, that was that, terrible. <laughs> that was like being a smartass, and yeah, I mean, you, you're like thumbing your nose at the consumer. Yep. That's really bad. And I, Wiki and says that's Major Nelson, good. and he's one of the big voices for Xbox. He is. He yeah. is one of the big. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? And and that just goes back to what I said earlier. You have people with masters and bachelor's degrees, and I have a uh, I have a degree, and and I'm not slamming anybody else that has a degree, but. You're in charge of a huge company. You are disconnected. I mean, there is just a disconnect in that company mm -hmm. uh, on the Xbox side between the gamer and executive, the executive branch or whatever. And when, you know, he came off like such a prick when he yep. said that. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, I was in the military. Even though it was 100 years ago, we still had internet connection. The only time you don't have internet connection is when you're, you know, in the field on the front lines, and I guarantee you, you're not going to have time to play your Xbox right, right, or PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, and 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 somebody in chat said, "Well, who who these days don't have it doesn't have an internet connection?" That may or may not be true. It depends on what country you live in and all that kind of stuff. But right. to come out and say that was, if I wasn't such an Xbox fanboy and I was on the fence. I give that. I give the company the finger and say, "I'm going to PlayStation." You know, to heck with you people. Mm -hmm. You you don't know where your paycheck comes from, buddy. It comes from us. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're absolutely. the ones that are buying it. So you know, don't don't tell me or sell me on a, 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 a last gen system because you know you're pushing out this new thing. You know, fine. You don't. I, you obviously don't want my money. And, and that's and I mean, granted, yeah. now they they've changed. They they've changed that specs and everything. But again, that whole basically shitstorm that came out in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. if there were people on the fence at that point, you know, you got to believe, or I have to believe, that a lot of them were swayed to, to, to the PlayStation, not by really what the PlayStation did, but by watching Microsoft shoot themselves in the foot, you know, step after step after step. It was kind of a no-brainer at that point that, well, yeah, I'm going to go with the lesser evil at <laughs> that one, you know? It's like, it, it to me, it's it's this arrogance, this right. king of the hill arrogance. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They haven't had competition. Let, let's just be honest. PS3 versus Xbox 360. There is no comparison. I mean, unless you're like a... Play, some comparison. They play unless games. you're a PlayStation <laughs> a fanboy. But, I mean, let's look at ease, ease of stream. I'm talking from a... Uh, from, from a streamer point of view, ease of streaming, uh, a lot of the game selections, you know, controls, you know, all this kind of stuff. Xbox wins numbers, j just in the numbers themselves, Xbox wins hands down. Um, and there's a degree of arrogance that they've taken with that to where in that dude's mind, there was nothing wrong in saying that. It's like, hey, you don't like it? Well, go buy our last generation console. Yeah, I just, uh, that rub me the wrong way oh they <laughs> rub me the wrong way i'm like you want me to buy your i'm gonna buy your product yeah, but if sorry you wanted, if you were looking for my sale buddy you just lost it that's it these, these people are just that is what is wrong in the gaming industry they look at us gamers and they are more than willing to allow us to test their games 
They're more than willing to then they're more than uh, willing to allow us to sit in a cubicle while somebody sits behind us and whips us to develop the games if we have uh, the programming knowledge and things like that. But getting into that executive or PR or marketing thing, mm -hmm. it, it, there's a wall there, and you can tell there is because th these people are walking out there in three thousand dollars suits. And trust me, I used to buy suits all the time. They were three thousand dollars if they were a nickel, especially Mister Shiny Green Suit. Um, you know, <laughs> walking out there, you know, there is such a divide. There is a a, a void of what they're actually selling and who they're selling to. They look mm -hmm. at us as almost like numb nuts, you know, and, and, and they are just so much smarter and look at that, you know, and that has to change in the gaming industry. And I don't know how it changes because the people who would change it are the ones standing up there making comments like that yeah. that obviously yeah. don't think it needs to be changed. Well, that's, that's why what was it was uh, Jack Trenton when he came out and, you know, basically laid out the whole anti-Microsoft <laughs> when he did a spiel and everyone, you know, at E3 was, you know, clapping and cheering and woohoo. He had that little smug look on his face, too. He's like, oh, yeah, well, we, yeah, we nailed this one. <laughs> and good for them, you know. And right. It was funny. They because deserve they it. Hit, yeah, he, they hit on he, – all he had to really do was come out and say, ours is cheaper. <laughs> it can play your games none of this drm at yeah, least keep not, it not the intrusive yeah. right you kept it simple and, and that way and and it got the response from the crowd mm. that everybody was looking for and got everybody up in arms and they were all cheering because they basically they, they did everything that that everyone kind of was looking for ever that, that the, the the current console players that are there that's what they're looking for yeah it's great that you're going to pack in these other things but don't do it above and beyond what your core is and your core is you're you're selling a game console to play games and, and yeah. that shouldn't be difficult it shouldn't mm -hmm. be restrictive it should be something simple yeah you can put it in turn it on and you play i mean that's the way it's always been from nintendo atari yeah popping a cartridge in and flipping mm -hmm. the power switch on that's part of the know. appeal over pc you know yeah, yeah, it's really pretty much plug and play to a certain extent, and right. and 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 what we're I think what we're approaching now with these next generation consoles, we're approaching a wall to where it's going to cease being a console. Right. You can it's already good. see it already approaching that way right. with Xbox, and and I think it, we we as the gamers are kind of pushing them in that direction while we push them to innovate or something. There's only so much innovation, so much innovation I think you can mm -hmm. do with a gaming console before right. you start to go like Star Trek ish. You know what I mean? And we're already starting uh, to go in that direction to the point to where you might as well buy a PC. Yeah. Right. Well, see, you know look, what I mean? You might look, as well just do that. If you look at the last gen and this upcoming gen, you, you, you see where we've already started kind of bridging that gap. Just the, the, the online multiplayer alone, the downloadable yeah. content that you can purchase. You know, a lot of this stuff was unknown in PlayStation 2. You know, that... that you just didn't do it. I mean, you could do LAN, you could do LAN hookup and stuff. And actually, I think PlayStation Two, you could get online to do multiplayer, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a, good. a key and feature. In the first anything. Xbox, I think you had to buy stuff uh, right, to, to get it to into it, yeah, right. for Xbox Live. And yeah. so we're already kind of in, in the last gen and this upcoming upcoming gen. You're 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 seeing a blur of lines between gaming console and less powerful mm -hmm. gaming PC gaming rig and and, and that that line is going to continue to be blurred but what you have to remember you know with your core audience you, you still have to have that i want to pop a game in and play it and then you bring along these people like we did last generation you know the the online the multi-party chat the the online game playing the streaming of videos and stuff like that these are all newer things that are coming out that we are now accustomed to and so as a gamer, you know, we're evolving as well. We're changing with the landscape as well. But you cannot, you know, force this thing down our throat. It has to be done in a way that we want to accept it mm -hmm. in, in bite-sized bites that we want to accept. And instead, you know, I, I feel that Microsoft took the heavy hand and said, here's what you're going to get. Boom. Uh, where Sony kind of took a step back and said... Here's the game console that you want. 
think you guys should already know that you know you're going to have your online capabilities. Yes, we're going to be charging for PS. Uh, you have to get you have to get uh, PlayStation Plus to do multiplayer now. Um, but with that benefit comes you know we're going to have better. You're, they're going to have cross party chat and stuff like that. So all right, you know I'm I'm there with you. I, I get you. They they took the best of Xbox and they brought it over. Or one of the big things that people enjoyed about Xbox and they're bringing it over. So that line becomes blurred a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Then you gradually bring in the other perks ideas, and it's going to blur the line a bit more. And it just seems like Microsoft just went too heavy up front and said, here, take this, and here's your new DVR slash game slash we'll do your laundry <laughs> slash change the oil of your car thing. And, yeah. And that's not really – nobody ever asked for that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think I, – I think I, you got to go back and – you know, to, to before both of them were debuted and the um and the rumors were coming around where they're saying it was going to be the call of the Xbox 720 and all this kind of stuff. I can't wait. I hope it includes this. I hope it includes this almost to the point of I hope it does my laundry and changes the oil yeah. in the car, you know, and changes the diaper of my infant child. Um, you know, we wanted them to innovate, and I, I think I can't blame Microsoft for really. I mean, you got to admit they really pushed the boundaries. They this did, one, but. On the flip side, it was just like you said. It was like, you wanted this. This is what you get, and be happy for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have no choice in this. You wanted us right. to push the boundaries. We pushed them. This is what you got to live with. But you, you get that. You get those boundaries pushed on our terms. You know, you, you got to do it the way we want you to do it. Part and of the problem I is I, our community I just reeks. Our, the game, you gotta admit, the gamer community stinks sometimes. Oh, I, I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty harsh. They can be fucking. We hard. are harsh. We push. <laughs> yeah. We push. We push, and then we are never satisfied. And they, 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 they give us what we they, they think we want, and we go, "That's not what we wanted." But we at the wanted same something time, else. yeah, you know. At the same time, it's a multi-billion-dollar industry, and we're paying for you know we're paying for a service, and we want quality games. Absolutely, and we should have. We should have. It should be quality, mm-hmm. you know, um, a feasibility, you know what I mean, and accessibility. Uh, those are should be the three top things that they should be looking at. Um, quality of games, quality of the system itself. I mean, how many times did uh, when the 360 first came out did the red rings just start coming around? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. The same thing with PlayStation, wasn't it? PlayStation, like the they the, had their orange light of whatever yeah, death, just yeah, like the red ring the, of death. Yeah. Or it was like the Blu-ray player melted or some kind of crap. I mean, so there's your quality, there's your feasibility, and then you know everything else. I mean, you know that should always be their first three priorities. I don't blame Microsoft for pushing the envelope, but I think they pushed the envelope, then they shredded it, then they went ahead and tried to tape. They're trying to tape it back together. You know right. what I mean? Very small strips. All right. So. Um, well, let's move on to some games. I'm not sure if Big D will be returning, but uh, hopefully he will. Yeah, I hope so. Um, so you guys have heard me talk about this game quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. And then Dirty and Kev are going to talk about their games. If we get Big D back on the call, we'll uh, we'll get him the cover. He had a couple games he wanted to talk about, so... Um, so here we go. It's Shadowrun. No surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want, I want everyone to check this game out. I'm so stoked for it. So, um, basically Shadowrun Returns is coming out. They finally set a date for 725. Uh, I'm stoked. <laughs> so I want to see if anyone else is going to be getting it and stuff and really get the word out about it. But, uh, basically Shadowrun is set in a cyberpunk fantasy kind of tactical role-playing world and uh it 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 thrived from a dice paper game you know and actually the creator of that role-playing dice game um is the one that's on this project so really cool stuff that the creator of the actual shadowrun franchise franchise like the whole dice game is a lead on this project for this game so um turn says wasn't shadowrun a third person fighting game any game no no, it was not. It started as a dice game. <laughs> it started, it as, started a as a dice game, but it was more like a like a first generation MMO. Like, but, but it wasn't massive multiplayer. Only. It was like a RPG, right? Wouldn't you say? Yeah, kind yeah, of. I can say that. Kind of, yeah, kind of like that. that. Um, I never played any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I never played any of them. Those, those were my games of choice. When, uh, well, the guy that worked on the tabletop game, uh, Jordan Weissman, is the lead project on this. So. 
Um, the thing that's really going to be interesting about the game is obviously it's uh, sporting a brand new look over the old Shadowrun games that run Genesis and Super Nintendo. Um, some of the cool things about the game is that you're going to be able to run around the city like you normally could in those games, but once you encounter a tactical situation, the game will transfer into a tactical mode. Um, kind of almost exactly like XCOM Enemy Unknown. They were actually inspired by XCOM Enemy Unknown. So, yeah, that's going to be great. Yeah, no loading screens or anything like that. Just boom, you're in combat, and now you have to move uh, like like you're moving on a, a chessboard almost, like XCOM, you know. Place your characters right behind cover, and you can come out successfully. Um, so you're going to be playing your main character through the story, and you're going to be able to hire runners just like you could in the previous, uh, the previous Shadowrun games. Which is really cool. So it's an indie. It's an indie title. So a very small studio. Hairbrain Schemes is working on it, but uh, it has a lot of potential. It has a lot of the lore from Shadowrun. You know, you're gonna have a rigger. You're gonna have your decker. You're gonna have your shamans and stuff like that. So there's a lot of lore behind it. Uh, believe it or not, Shadowrun came up with the Matrix for, before the Matrix movies came out. So when you're jacking, when your decker's jacking into a computer to try and steal, you know, some company's money. Um, you know, that's, you know, when you're in the Matrix and that's where it was derived from. So, in my opinion, they Before ripped Johnny off... Mnemonic. <laughs> Johnny, my that hard drive is full, movie. bruh. <laughs> <laughs> my wet drive, bro. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, it looks really good and I'm really into it. Um, one of the things I like about the game is that the editor is already out for the game. So, people are already <laughs> recreating the Super NES and Sega Genesis title titles um and they'll probably be ready around launch so you're gonna have your you're gonna have your um your story that comes out in the game and then you're gonna be able to drop in some uh some other stories that people have created or recreated a lot of people are gonna do both sides of the situation you might play as the hero and then you're gonna be able to download the other side of the campaign and play as the villain and get to see that side of it and how that unveils you know and kill the heroes so i think it looks really cool um, you guys should definitely definitely check it out. The address is on the screen, the top of the screen there. So definitely check it out and uh, see what you guys think. It is going to be on Steam, or is already on Steam, I believe, for pre-order. And you can pre-order from their site, whichever you prefer. So I'm going to do my normal gaming uh, thing, and I'm going to wait until you stream it to see if it's something <laughs> I want to pick up. Uh, <laughs> I'm so tight with a dollar. It, uh, it looks really, really good. And the fact mm -hmm. that it kind of combines, like, your XCOM, and you're just running around, you know, running around the city doing this and that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's that that's really cool pulling two aspects, um, uh, 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 two different types of games together. Um, I like how the developers have been very upfront and honest with people, mm -hmm. unlike Lol Z. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, you know. It wasn't going to be ready in time, and they just came out and said, hey, look, you know, we want to make a quality game. It's just not ready. We're pushing the date back. We are sorry. You know, they were sorry, you know, everything like that. I like that from a game uh, studio uh, that you – and you don't – let's be honest. You don't see that very often. It's just, hey, mm -hmm. the release date is now this. Um, or they try and rush a piece of crap and patch it later. So um, that leans me towards the buy, but again <laughs> – I'm leaning, yeah, but I yeah. need you to push me I'll over push the you side. Over, you know, yeah. I need you to push me over. <laughs> oh, it looks good. I'm excited for it. Cool. <laughs> All right, who wants to go up next? I'm, go for it, dude. Uh, Okie dokie. Um, so with that, uh, and I know I mentioned earlier today about uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, was going to be brought out and go, going cross-platform for the first time. Uh, before in the past, it was uh, strictly PlayStation 2 um, and some DS. There was a DS and Game Boy Advance, actually. But that's not what this review is about. It's not about Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, it's actually about Kingdom Hearts uh, 1.5 HD, which comes out this fall, unless you live in Japan, which you've already gotten it. Uh, otherwise, it'll be released in September for everybody. Um, so basically what it is, is it's the original Kingdom Hearts game that is remastered all in HD from the original PlayStation 2. Um, and you're getting the Japanese version. So it's Kingdom Hearts uh, Final Remix. And what that basically is going to give you is there's extra bosses that are in there. There's different keyblades that are in there. There's uh, different cutscenes and, and different 
different things that you can pick up. So it's not the exact same game you may have played in the past. Um, and, and really, the story just follows, uh, you know, a 14-year-old little kid named Sora. Uh, his world is pretty much destroyed by, you know, bad guys. Uh, and then throughout his travels, he meets a lot of characters um, from the Disney and the Final Fantasy universe. And that's, I thought, you know, I remember playing the game for the first time. I thought that was a very strange combination. But the way the story was written was great, and I tied him in, and it actually felt very natural to have... You know, Donald Duck and Goofy <laughs> running with you, <laughs> and you come up on Sephiroth, <laughs> you know, or clouds <laughs> and Titus and stuff. And it's it, well, they really did a great job with that. And I, I loved it as, you know, you know, this game came out, the original came out, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago or something like that. And, and it was just really neat because you got into, like, the different Disney worlds and got to explore. You know, you went to Alice in Wonderland and you were in Agrabah with Aladdin or Pride Rock with the Lion King and stuff. And they, they would join your team and you can use those guys as, as, you know, as players. And I really thought that was neat. And I, I'm glad to see the remix coming out that, and it's bringing it all up to HD. Uh, so it's going to look fantastic. Um, the other part that you get with this game which I thought was a nice little bonus is not only do you get the first game remade, uh, but you're also going to get uh, the second, what is it? Where am I? There. Second game is uh, notes. Yeah, <laughs> Ch chain of memories, which was originally released on the game boy advanced. So that tells you how old that one is. Uh, that's going to be completely redone and you know 3d sprites they've updated the controls on it uh to make it more responsive to kind of bring it in line with the newer games that are out there the newer kingdom heart games that are out there so it, it should look amazing it continues on the story of sora and mickey and donald and everybody else and and, and goofy and the whole kit caboodle um and it carries on with that so that also comes with this game and then what the third thing they throw in is from kingdom hearts 358 slash 2 uh, they're going to add in all the cutscenes remastered in HD, so to flesh out the story a little bit more. And, and they're, I believe they're doing all this in, in anticipation of Kingdom Hearts three coming out in uh, twenty late twenty fourteen, early twenty fifteen. So I actually kind of I've already read up on a few rumors that this one point five is kind of step one. They're going to bring that out, kind of bring everybody back into the fold again, Re you know, remind you why the game was so amazing in the beginning. And then about halfway between now and Kingdom Hearts 3, there's rumor to be a Kingdom Hearts 2.5, which will remaster Kingdom Hearts 2, a couple of the other DS games that they had uh, released as well, Chain of Memories and stuff. Um, to kind of bring that up to spec so everyone can kind of get your hands wet bring you on board get to know the story so then when when kingdom hearts 3 finally does comes out you know you're up to speed with all of it and and, and you can kind of pick it up and, and go with it and it's you know i thought it was a real fun game it's a fun you know yeah. family friendly game my kid yeah. loves watching me play it because you got a hundred acre woods and winnie the pooh's there and you're running around looking for 101 dalmatians or That's you're cool. peter you know you're playing with peter pan and tinkerbell like in there in neverland and fighting captain hook and so it just takes you to all these great little locales and i just you know i just always it brings out you know brings out the kid in me when I, when I play, you know, I love Disney. I've been there a, a ton of times. So yeah. I just thought, you know, I, I, that would be my game. I, you know, so I throw that. And, and it is, unfortunately, it is PS3 exclusive right now. So any of you have gone out and picked up a PS3 for cheap, thinking you're going to come over to the dark side or the good side, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that might be a game you want to consider after, of course, you play The Last of Us. You know, and then think about something like this. <laughs> cool. Very so, good, man. Cool. Yeah, it looks great. Um, anybody have any questions before we move on to Kev about Shadowrun never, or Kingdom Hearts? 1. I've never put. Hey, okay, I'm going to say something really original. I've never played any of those games. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear me say that before. He's like, "What the hell are you doing on a show like oh, this? You don't play anything." Mortness hit it. He didn't like the Little Mermaid world, and I have to agree. The Little Mermaid world was was terrible. <laughs> there's, there's Nothing is song. worse than the water worlds and super. Yo, dude, there's a song you have to do 
and, and you got to do it right. Like you got to hit the notes right, and you'll play that song nine hundred times to get it right. Oh, and wow. even it's it's optional though. If you're going for the you know the big Ultima Keyblade, you got to do it. But otherwise, you don't have to. But yeah, that was, <laughs> <laughs> that, was that was a brutal part. <laughs> All right, Kev. Uh, all right. I'm going to do a little something different here. Well, I guess not a little bit something different, but I'm not as organized as Dirty because that's just <laughs> not my nature. So I have no notes. So I'm going doing this all off memory, which is a really bad thing. Um, oh, my uh, game that I chose is WWE 2K14, and I chose that because it impacts all of our streams because we have, um, uh, well, the now discontinued Monday Night Raffle, Wednesday Night War, uh, 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 Dins's um, uh, stream, uh, you know, where we all did that. And um, it was just debuted on Monday Night Raw. Not, I, it was this past uh, Monday night um, uh, and everything like that. Um, I am going to be very different than Dirty and Raffle on their uh, um, on their review, and mine is a negative review. Okay, um, what I see uh, from what has come out, and 2K has kind of been very kind of quiet about this. It's been in like what they considered their alpha stage uh, stage testing for probably a couple weeks now. Um, they just debuted some trailers for it on uh, Monday Night Raw, like I said last week, along with the box cover and everything, which was surprisingly a PS3 cover. Um, uh, surprisingly. Well, <laughs> normally they wouldn't have like PlayStation or whatever. It would just be like just what the art was going to be. Right. Um, uh, but they did do PS3. Um, to me, 2K14 doesn't look anything different than WWE13. Um, you can tell by the animations from the cutscenes that they have shown. Uh, just look at the graphics. Uh, mm -hmm. It still looks very kind of blocky-ish, almost. Mm -hmm. um, and it, there doesn't seem to be any real innovation there. And my my take on that is because when THQ went belly up and 2K bought that part of the franchise, they bought, I don't want to say they bought the people, but they, they, they took the THQ people from working on uh, that were working on that game and brought them over to 2K for them to continue working on it. Um, it's still with the Havoc engine. Uh, that uh, 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 the uh, WWE 13 was on. Believe it or not, The Last of Us is on the uh, Havoc engine. So there is a lot of potential for that end game engine. You know, you look at look, look at that. Okay, look at that preview, and then look at uh, Last of Us. Um, it just doesn't seem like there's uh, any real new innovation there, um, and it seems like they're really on to server stability. Okay, uh, uh, which is a good thing. Hey, look, how many of us try to download or upload things <laughs> yeah. uh, for yeah. each other on WWE 13? It's like, I can't get it. The servers are bad. Um, so, yeah, I, this it just it's just garbage. And I don't know if it's because of the range of motions, all the different moves and everything that they have to do, that they have to kind of keep the, the, um, the actual graphics simpler in a way or something like that. But really, it's just kind of disappointing. Am I going to pick it up? Yeah. Um, let me be honest. Yeah, I'm going to get it. Mostly because I want to do Wednesday Night War again, and uh, it's going to be with uh, 2K14. It's you know we I've retired uh, 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 13. I think Raffles uh, retired 13. I don't know if Dins yeah. has or not. Um, but uh, uh, we do want to bring back our our fight nights. Um, so I'm going to pick it up. Uh, hopefully, it's something that really blows my mind. One cool thing that they are doing is they are having a contest that, um, while they already have the outside box cover art done, the inside layer, they're opening it up to people to design. And they're going to pick one person. And uh, some of the fan art I've seen uh, submitted to them just looks fantastic. I mean, it's amazing. It's like, this is better than the crappy thing that you get gave to the front of the box, you know what I mean? Um, but really, I'm just kind of disappointed in it. Um, I was expecting a lot more, especially from 2K. Uh, they put out some pretty darn good titles. I mean, let's just look at the uh, Borderlands franchise. Uh, and not to mention their other uh, uh, sports uh, uh, um, uh, sports games. I mean, they're fantastic looking. Um, uh, this isn't just going to be a next-gen exclusive. It's going to be on Xbox 360 as well as um, uh, PS3. Uh, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. My guess is no. I think it's just because it's the THQ team. Mm -hmm. um, and really, 
I gotta say it, I'm wholly disappointed. All right. Um, well, I'm guessing Big D is going to be busy tonight. He had a couple games he wanted to cover, so we'll probably have to cover that on the next episode of Hype. Unfortunately. Love you, D. Yeah, miss you, Big D. D. We got you, bro. <laughs> so I don't want to reveal his games because, uh, you know, I don't want to, I want to, I want it to be a surprise when Big D gives his commentary, but uh, it looks like that'll probably do it for uh, the third episode of Hype. Let's do some shout outs. Um, Kev, kick it off, man. You want to shout out your stream, your Twitter, whatever? Yeah, um, uh, twitch.tv slash Kevin's back for when I do stream, and at Kevin McAvenny. <laughs> if you can spell that, you, just, <laughs> you know, I'll give you a dollar. No, I really won't, but I'll at least shout you out or something uh, for my Twitter. Um, also, on my, uh, but the easiest way to do it is just go on twitch.tv slash Kevin's back, and uh, all my info is there uh, on the bottom. If you go to the beta, beta page, my YouTube, my, uh, uh, Twitter, the blog that I haven't done in a couple months, uh, all that kind of good stuff. So that's uh, that's about it for my shoutouts. Okay, dirty. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, at dirty underscore bird eighteen, and you'll see a lot of tweets about Kevin Raffles and Dinz's streams and when they go live <laughs> and what they're playing. I uh, support my boys as much as I can, and uh, Rufus. various you know Rufus. <laughs> uh, various you know football and hockey you know tweets here and there, especially if you're a Buffalo fan, <clears throat> Ebony. <clears throat> Okay, uh, and that's all. That's all I got. So, <laughs> all right. Well, since Big D isn't here, I'm gonna shout him out. Twitch.tv/slash Dinsdale1978 is his stream, and his Twitter is at Dinsdale1978. Um, I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Uh, I had a blast. I know these guys did, and, and thank you, oh, Dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the invite, man. Yeah, thank you, you for the opportunity, man. That was I've had a blast. Yeah, it was so, fun. Definitely you guys will see some more of this. We all had a great time. So thank you all for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. All right. Follow the hype. Woo! Woo! Yeah, the hype. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>